Thank you so much for all your support and thank you so much for showing interest in this series. I am very glad to present this second episode of Solid Saturday. But before we start actually, there is one question that lots of you asked me that why the name Solid Saturday. So reason behind it, I was looking for something which is you know talk more about strength or the powers or uh, more about you know your positivity. So when i was thinking about the name first i was thinking that it can be like solid saturday and then from that word solid i converted into the solid so solid saturday is all about following your career following your passion and following the leadership skills so hope that uh, answers your questions in the second episode i welcome our second guest on the second episode John Cron PhD who is a chief data scientist at machine learning company Untapped. So let's get Hi started. There. I'm John Crone, and I'm the chief data scientist at the machine learning company Untapped. I'm here to answer a number of questions that people asked. I'm looking forward to it. Describe machine learning or data science to any non-technical user because we know that technical user can anyhow understand it. So we would like to listen how you can describe it to a non-technical user are any kind of information that we collect and we can put in a table. Somebody who is a data analyst is able to take those data and create summary reports on those data. So uh, this person could create trend charts uh, that are retrospective, that kind of thing. A data scientist goes one step further and uses historical data to build models that allow us to make predictions about the future. So data science is about using statistics to make predictions about the future. Machine learning is a field of data science where we set up computers to learn from training data, typically very large amounts of training data in the case of machine learning. And the, the details are technical, but essentially there's two ways you could build a model. You could either use classical statistics or you could use machine learning. Uh, machine learning tends to be better suited to very large data sets. Second question is, what is the role of chief data scientist? Is it more over like a technical role or administrative role? How do you describe your role and responsibilities? And whether the chief data scientist is a better, better title or the director of data science? A chief data scientist can have a lot of different kinds of responsibilities depending on the particular company. At Untapped, I'm responsible for managing a team of data scientists, uh, the projects that they're working on, and coordinating on their projects with clients, helping develop a product or a research and development vision on what our team of data scientists should be doing, uh, relaying the results of our experiments to clients and to investors, um, and helping the back-end engineers and the front-end engineers who bring um, our data science to life for our clients, helping them to, to do their job as well. So it is a mix, in my case, of being both an administrative and a technical role. It is something like a 50-50 split where I spend half of my time deep in the weeds um, writing code or talking to my team about models that they're building, working with them on a whiteboard on how we can be solving particular problems, ideating on um, better ways to potentially be solving a problem. And then the other half of the time is spent uh, pitching to clients, um, talking with existing clients, and answering emails is a big part of the job for sure. So with respect to what is a better title, chief data scientist or director of data science, there are different titles. So a typically in a large organization, a chief data scientist 
would be senior to a director of data science. So there might be um, a handful of different directors of data science that all report into the chief data scientist. He's on the similar line, like, you know, how do you differentiate between the roles like chief data scientist and normal data scientist or any other? Um, essentially, it's that uh, a data scientist is, is uh, someone who reports into uh, somewhere in that chain of hierarchy into a chief data scientist. The question is more over on the research. Um, kind of a research you are doing on the company, how do you think that it will contribute towards uh, company goals or any kind of a company benefit? Our primary focus at Untapped is building natural language models that automate aspects of business processes, um, particularly in the human resources space. So our models enable people like hiring managers and recruiters to be able to both do their job much more quickly with fewer errors or, or making the job um, less boring by um, automating the mundane parts of the task and also allowing these people to do things that they would otherwise not be able to do. So we can, for example, um, scour instantly a database that you might have of millions of candidates for a particular job. And so that's the kind of thing that you can't do manually and uh, that we know keyword search uh, is not nearly as good as the kinds of machine learning models that we build uh, at Untapped. So um, a client of ours did an internal study and found that relative to their existing keyword search, using a technology like ours, which is a deep learning model that's trained on hundreds of millions of data points, we are able to surface 21 times uh, the uh, 21 times as many of the most relevant candidates uh, for the roles that they were searching for, relative to that company's previous best practice, which was a complex Boolean search. Oh, and I have more on that. Um, and in addition to our work on uh, natural language processing, we also work with uh, researchers at Columbia University where we develop tools that automatically um, process uh, images of infant brains in order to identify the tissues in the brain. And in the future, that will allow us to automate the identification of unhealthy tissue in infants' brains. Fifth question is, uh, which trends currently we are seeing have gonna have the lasting impact on how we use the data? The biggest trend in data is that about every 18 months, there's twice as much data as there was 18 months earlier. So the amount of data on the planet is doubling every 18 months. So that's really crazy. Um, it's a huge amount of data and we need techniques like machine learning techniques, particularly deep learning techniques, to be able to identify the relevant signal from all of the noise of those huge amounts of data. So that impacts my company positively because it means that we have way more data that we can work with. It means that we can build more sophisticated models that can automate more and more processes. It's really exciting. Next question is, uh, which is your favorite algorithm and why? And any kind of interesting findings towards that algorithm which you would like to share with us? Today, my favorite algorithm is an exciting new model called GPT-2. You can play with it yourself at talktotransformer.com. So this is a tool that is a state-of-the-art natural language processing algorithm, and it allows you to do a lot of different things. In the Talk to Transformer demo that you can play around with, you provide a, a segment of the beginning of a segment of text, and you can put in funny things, you can put in serious things, and GPT-2 will then provide the following text, and it comes up with some very um, surprising and complicated answers where um, it ties together common threads, um, it has um, thoughtful formatting. I think you'll be really impressed if you try out this tool. The question is, uh, how did you follow your passion, or how did you find it and then take the actions to pursue that passion? I've always been interested in science and I've always been fairly uh, numerate, quantitative. So 
I've always enjoyed and found, uh, you know, math classes, statistics classes, um, any kind of classes that involves quantities uh, to be relatively straightforward, and, and that I enjoyed thinking about these kinds of problems. So from a young age, I knew I wanted to do science or engineering or medicine or something like this. And I did an undergrad in science, trying to keep my options open so that I could go into medicine or, or down the science track. And uh, then I was accepted to do a PhD at Oxford University, and it was fully funded. So I thought, well, this seems like a really great opportunity. If I want to go and study medicine after my PhD, doing the PhD gave me the opportunity to say, maybe I'll still do medicine in the future. Um, I can do that after the PhD, you know, medical sciences PhD, that'll make sense. Um, however, while I was doing the PhD, I became really excited about machine learning. I, I focused specifically on building machine learning tools for solving problems with very large data sets. Um, so gen genetic data, brain imaging data. And yeah, I discovered that that's what I wanted to be doing for the rest of my life. I've applied it in a number of different fields. I've worked as a trader at a hedge fund. I've worked as a data scientist at a large digital advertising company. And for me, working at a startup like Untapped, that turns out to be the perfect fit. So I've been the chief data scientist at Untapped for four years now. I absolutely love it. Uh, I love the, the small size, getting to know everyone in the company, uh, having every decision that I make make a big impact on the company as well as for our clients. And so, yeah, love it. Love uh, the team we have here, the clients we have, the problems we're solving. And I expect to be the chief data scientist at Untapped for the foreseeable. Next question is, uh, what advice or what are the skill set that you would like to advise the aspiring data scientists who are looking forward to build their career in the data science? The most important skill for a data scientist to have is the ability to learn on their own. So the technologies that we're using are always changing. There's always something new. And so the most important skill is to be able to look up things yourself and find solutions. Uh, Stack Overflow is your best friend. More about you. So what do you do outside of your day-to-day -day job or day-to-day -day work? Outside of my day job at Untapped, I'm also passionate about writing books. So my first book, Deep Learning Illustrated, came out in October 2019, and it became an instant number one bestseller on Amazon, which is awesome. Uh, so check out that book, Deep Learning Illustrated, if uh, you're interested in learning about what deep learning is and how you can be applying it. Uh, on top of writing books, I also teach. So I guest lecture at universities, and I have my own curriculum that I teach. It's a comprehensive 30-hour curriculum that I teach at the New York City Data Science Academy. I also uh, teach online in O'Reilly Safari and in meetups in the community. So there's lots of ways that you can uh, check out uh, things that I've been teaching. Uh, generally, people really enjoy it. Uh, if you want to, you can head to my website, johncrone.com, and you can sign up for my email newsletter to make sure that you know anytime that new products are coming out. Um, yeah. So you're also welcome to get in touch with me and let me know about things that you might like to be learning about um, that I haven't taught about yet. I love I love getting that kind of feedback. So you can find me on LinkedIn or on Twitter, and um, I'd love to have a conversation. And the last question is: uh, describe your leadership style. How you know, like important? What would be the important aspect of uh, leading a large team? I would say that I have a relatively trusting leadership style. So I hire people who are excellent data scientists, people who are able to um, figure out lots of solutions on their own, and who kind of get a sense of when it's the right time to be asking their colleagues or me for help. So every single one of the people that I work with is different. And um, so, you know, I need to work with everyone in, di in a different way. And you kind of get a sense of that as the years go on working with someone, you can improve more and more. So it's, it's a constant evolution, like any kind of relationship, um, to discover more and more about each other and so that you can help um, your employees be happier and happier and also more productive. So um, in general, uh, I hold 
uh, daily uh, stand-up meetings. So we have a 15-minute stand-up meeting at the beginning of every day. And when we have that stand-up meeting, uh, I write down on the board what everybody's tasks are for the day and with a specific deadline. So is it are you going to have this task done by the end of today or this task for the end of tomorrow? For bigger ideas, we have another uh, board for research and development ideas that are going to last longer than you know a task that's going to be done today or tomorrow. Um, that stand-up is also an opportunity for people to get help on particular blockers that they're facing. And if it seems like discussion of that blocker is going to take a long time, then we'll say, okay, let's set up a meeting for after the stand-up to talk about it. And so we, we frequently gather around each other's computers and talk about problems we're facing. And when somebody's facing a particularly difficult problem, um, either I or maybe even the whole data science team, if it's a very difficult issue, we will gather together around a whiteboard away from our computers, critically, and we'll talk about the problem. And often that leads to a breakthrough. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you found this video useful for the, it is especially for the people who are looking to build their career in the data science. Hope you understand some of the things which are happening around the data science. And I will be coming up with many more such videos and many more such leaders on this podcast. So if you have any feedback, please do provide. This is my second attempt to improvise this podcast as per your feedback. So let me know whether you like this better than the previous one and I will follow that. If you have anything to add, please do let me know. Also, I would like to thank John actually for providing his time and giving me the answers to those questions that you guys had. Thank you so much and till the time we meet again, uh, happy leading and see you guys soon. Bye. -bye.